Welcome back, everyone, to Vox Markets. My name is Paul Hill. I'm delighted again to be able to speak to CEO Shuk Chamdal, Marketing Director Shay Watkins, and Interim um, CFO David Forth of Cake Box, the UK's go to provider of luxury yet affordable fresh cream cake. So, uh, welcome, Jeds. Welcome. Morning. Hello. Yeah, hi. Yeah, well, big congrats on uh, Monday's excellent uh, full year results. But before we sort of start digging into the details, Sue, I don't suppose you could just give um, investors a bird's eye view of what you're seeing at the coalface in terms of the health of the consumer, uh, specifically in light of sort of the cost of living crisis? Oh, absolutely. Or oh, just a little note on our results. You know, we've done what we've done every year for the last three or four years. We've delivered what we've said. And or we've done really well despite uh, what the the year has brought, even with the overhang of the the pandemic. With you know, with the revenues up more than fifty percent, gross profit up forty five percent, and EBITDA up by almost eighty percent. And this cost of living, or is now starting to kick in, and I think it's just a bit too early to see how that's going to affect. Because I'm sure people have or pre booked their holidays for August, or uh, which they probably done last year. And then once they come back from uh, the holidays and the school year starts, and that's when they'll make adjustments to their budgets because, of course, as you know, the utilities have gone up and other, uh, or the rate of inflation is going up as well. And so I believe that you know the, the consumer behavior will start being affected in, say, October. But we were born in the midst of a recession. We've done massive growth there we've gone through the pandemic and we've come out uh, with flying colors and i believe that our people will still adjust to the cost of living but they won't compromise on that one birthday treat they have a year and that's where they'll be spending with us yeah well i'll just give you a bit of a positive anecdotal um, evidence there Sue, because my daughter who tasted a cake box cake 12 months ago was so delighted with it particularly with the family that she's personally requested she's got a uh, a work party in august so uh, she's we're already ordering one for a, a cake box you will get lots of returning customers because she's delighted but that is only one 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 person now david just in terms of the uh, He's give us a, just the top level highlights then for the for the for the financials. And obviously, Souks told us, you know, in terms of the really strong t- top line growth. But maybe elaborate on the margins and also on um, sort of like the cash generation. Yeah, well, uh, the most uh, most interesting news actually is that obviously our sales are 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 up fifty um, odd percent to uh, thirty three million, but actually. Uh, what's really interesting is our franchisee sales, which are up to 66 million, uh, because obviously we make mm. a margin on what we sell to them. But that 66 million means that we're now a 66 million pound brand. Um, and that actually positions ourselves very, very well, because it means we're, we're starting to get uh, people noticing us. Um, in, in terms of the split of the sales, um, we've, we're now taking... Um, much more from our uh, for, for, from our uh, website sales, uh, which is very good for, for us. That's up forty one percent. What people perhaps don't realise is that our website sales track straight through with a small small commission taken uh, to to the shops. So they're not competing with each with each other. When the uh, when we take an order on the web, it means that the store ends up fulfilling it. Uh, which is, you know, but also we can take orders on the web from people who perhaps wouldn't right. walk past our stores, which is massive help in terms of our margin. So just just on that, yeah. David, so what, it's what you're saying is that you, effectively centrally you've got the website, you take the order and then you allocate the order to the nearest uh, franchisee in that locality. And for the pros, just the processing of that order to cover some of the cost of the marketing through the through the website, you charge them a fee. Is that how it works? That's, that's that's exactly how it works, and and so that is different from some companies' web sales where you've got to deliver it, where you've got problems of returns, any of that stuff. Something I think it's eighty percent of our web sales are click and collect to the stores, <clears throat> which means that the customer goes there, he sees he or she she's, sees the store for the first time, gets um, excellent customer service, sees what other stuff we do. They've gone in for a cake, but they'll see our slices. So, I mean, all of that works very well for us. 
and we also have a we've got a growing delivery platform but it's that um, click and collect that's best why i'm focusing on this is that people actually often don't understand that the web sales are not cannibalizing the store sales they're actually mm. contributing a larger uh, total sales in terms of margin because you asked about margin yeah margin's gone down from 49 percent to 48 that's partly because we do make a margin on our what we call franchise uh, package but that franchise package is where we set up a new store now this year we opened 31 stores last year we opened 24 <clears throat> which means we've got more sales um, go through that channel uh, but obviously at a slightly lower margin and that's um, because you, you've you helped them set up with the actual the cost the capital and well basically yeah, well, just the branding and whatever it is yeah, well, that's right. I mean, when you see the stores, they're, they're very nicely fitted out with our company colours, which Sook's wearing. Yes. Uh, and, uh, we, you know, we've got the fridges, we've got the cold store, we've got preparation room. Right, OK, and gotcha. We, we can fit that out in, in a very short time. So it's company, lower, it's lower margin, mean, isn't it, is what you're saying, yeah, than your product yeah. sales. And uh, that's what it was, so it was a pure sort of mix of it. Yeah. Good. But just... but, yeah, sorry, obviously the benefit is we've we then end up with more stores making, selling more cakes, and that helps the whole business. Yeah. Now, Che, just in terms of the actual marketing and sort of the online, I did see overall sort of like, as David mentioned, you know, that the, the franchisee sales is now 66%. Uh, it was like for like 12%, which frankly is just industry beating. Yes. And likewise with the on, the online side, how do you see that sort of mix moving forward? And what's generating the huge amount of growth? Because because frankly, you're not spending that much on your promotion anyway. No, um, I think um, the story thus far for Cakebox Online um, has been an organic one, um, which is obviously one of the best stories you can, you can build on. Um, so everything that we do on our website, and we turn it over quite a lot of um, sales and transactions on our current website um, on, on a daily basis. And, and the conversion rates we've got, the visits, the organic traffic that we've got is industry leading. What we haven't done is we haven't tapped into the digital and, and the paid side of advertising, where we're adding more customers, incremental sales. Um, and also the second part of that is realizing the customer lifetime value, mm. realizing the loyalty that, that, that is involved in the customer and how we can drive that and maximize you know returns for kickbox and the beauty is that the website is, is actually a bro brokerage for for our franchisees um and when we tap into this paid element of advertising and we sharpen up we have a lot of sharpening up to do as well we're still sort of um in the in the phase where we we're transforming our digital capabilities um i think that's that's where it's really exciting for for kickbox um, to be able to just capture this new audience that we haven't had in the past. Because what we currently have is a very, very loyal um, Heartland audience, um, but a lot of people who haven't heard of Cakebox, and that's a massive opportunity for us. So just, so it's just so on, really exciting. Yeah, so just on that one, if you push the clock forward three to four years, et cetera. Now, I did see in the statement, mm -hmm. and, I, and I guess Souk is sort of like, you know, giving you a bit of a target here, but uh, to have a split between online and and bricks and mortar between 50 50 yeah. now just doing the maths if you've got sort of like uh, i don't know was it i can't remember was it 15 mil or 13 mil it was about 20 percent of the total yeah. was yeah. online compared to what it is in total franchise but if you're going to get that that means your store must be sort of like round about uh, you know sort of what that 50 or 50 odd or something like that just over 50 so if you're going to get 50 50 then it means you've got to increase your online from what 13 to 15 to 50 yeah. over the how are you going to do that? I think it's, it's um, a really good question. What we what we are untapped in is paid advertising. Um, and I've been running some tests um, to look at what the possibility, what the opportunity is online for Kickbox. Um, and the opportunity is huge. Um, and early indications from my tests are for every one pound we spend, we get a five pound revenue back. So it's actually a really positive story there as well. Um, so when we drive money in, what we're doing is generating new customers um, mm. and retaining those customers. Um, and just remember, what we're not doing is we're not we're not a direct to consumer classic business model. It's, it's almost the perfect storm, really, for for online. We're taking the order online. Um, that order is filled, and and um, instead of being delivered by a third party delivery, consumers are clicking and collecting. And I have no plans, and I see no no reason to 
change that behavior to a delivery model because consumers want to come to the shop. They want to come to pick their cake up. They want to just check it over um, because that's their celebration. We don't want to change that. So um, I, I, yeah, a hard target to achieve, but I don't see any reason why we can't get there because what we're doing is we're capturing new customers online um, cost effectively. You know, we don't have to rely on national TV campaigns. Um, what we do is rely on ad advertising, intelligent, smart technology online to capture the consumer when they're searching for a cake. Mm. And if we present ourselves in the best way, give them a reason to buy um, and go to the store and click and collect, then then happy days and, and come back again when you have your next celebration. Yeah. So I don't see it, I see it as a big target, but something that is 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 achievable, absolutely, because everyone is shopping online now. 80% of our consumers are, are placing orders on their mobile phones uh, on our current website. Um, yeah. and, and that's a sign of, of the shift in, in behavior. Uh, fortunately, everyone is trying to, to struggle to get online. Mm. Um, Cakebox has done it organically, and we can build from that um, and really, really drive incremental um, customers and value into the brand. Great. Well, you've got the right um, you've got the right marketing director there, uh, Sue. That's for sure. <laughs> no, Hopefully. No, no, just on the other side of the coin, uh, you've got Shay who's going to uh, drive the online sales, and obviously you've got. Uh, I, can you just sort of take us through sort of like your, your store um, <clears throat> rollout going forward, and likewise in terms of sort of like um, <clears throat> managing the supply chain associated with it, and you know getting all the relevant uh, products, etc., all infrastructure in place, which you may have already done. That's right. Oh, we had a record uh, year last year, 31 stores open. Oh, we're aiming for another 24 stores this year, and we'll hit that magic number of 200 stores later on in this year. Mm -hmm. And it may, it may coincide with the AGM, which is in, in September. And uh, or it's not just about stores that I talk about now, it's about locations, because as you know, we're, we're in the uh, supermarket kiosks, uh, we're in, we've got uh, shopping centre kiosks, and there's so much opportunity out there, so much white space where we can fill in, or there's uh, opportunities like train stations, and there's uh, other avenues where we can, or the franchisee can set up a, a stall and get uh, or a bolt-on sales to their stores. And uh, we've got over 42 of, of our franchisees who are multi-site uh, owners, and we've got quite a few who are ambitious to open even more stores. So currently the highest store owner is about eight and we can see that going up to 10 to 12. And if you see that everybody's got the ambitions to increase their ownership and we get our brand awareness out there. We've just opened up in, of all places, St. Neots and in Cambridgeshire. And that mm. can't be further than our heartlands. Mm. And that shop has done really, really well. And that's given us so much encouragement to be able to go out in the white spaces that we're currently not in. What about places like, I mean, you've got, I mean, I looked at your map and you've, you've got a lot of white space in Scotland <laughs> and, right. and Wales and, 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 um, and Cornwall. Yeah, well, we've got three in, in Scotland, in, in Wales now. And we've got another one coming up online soon. And we're going to do a presentation roadshow in Scotland itself. And David, who's, um, um, uh, who's got, in, got contacts in the Scottish government, he went to a conference there. Uh, and, they're very, and they're very keen to help us uh, expand up there. Mm. And what about your new products, um, Sue? I, mean, I know you've... You, you, any more or are you just going to sort of like um you know look at the recommendations and the suggestions from your customers like your, your naked uh, brands oh absolutely and then the feedback we're getting is they want some with a, a total flavor for example they want a lemon cake and a mango cake or or a passion fruit cake yeah and my wife wife will, will want a lemon cake if you could get a lemon cake wow we're going to get some slices that's right and uh david uh, or has realized that there's no such thing as having a diet when you're working for me, because we were doing cake <laughs> tastings last week with all the flavors, and, and they are the best people to taste it with, because they are also the consumers. And, the, and all of the staff gave us very positive reviews on, on, on these uh, uh, flavored cakes. And so we'll be rolling these out uh, later on in the year. And for summer, uh, we're hoping to roll out our strawberry cheesecake our lime and lemon cheesecake and our blueberry cheesecake and so all there's so much more ideas out there we, we're looking at tall cakes we're looking at pinato cakes also there's a there's a lot of development going on and uh, just watch this space 
Oh yeah, no, I will do. My wife certainly will. Now, David, just on um, the sort of the uh, rising costs. Obviously, we've had um, we, and, you know that great, we've got the regrettable situation in Ukraine at the moment with with corn prices going up. How how is that all being managed through? Because obviously, you've got Shea who's going to well he has has been increasing the the sales already. You've got Suk who's got even bigger brands with bringing some you know sort of like uh, new products. In terms of managing the sort of costs and the margins, how, how's that sort of working through? Well, it, it will be our intention to preserve our margins and also, importantly, our franchisees' margins broadly. Mm. So far at the start of the year, we've been quite fortunate because we've got a very sharp purchasing manager who's been working really well to keep the, uh, keep, keep the lid on the costs. Um, some of our most important costs are the things which go into the cake mix, obviously, which contains wheat and also some uh, some particular edible oils. Uh, all of those have gone up in price a lot. But our purchase, uh, our suppliers have brought forward quite a lot of these things. And importantly, uh, they've given us fixed prices. Actually, they gave us fixed prices before the, 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 the Russian invasion of, of Ukraine kicked off. So that protects us going forward uh, part of the way. But obviously, as... As we move through the year, we will be uh, raising prices judiciously to preserve those, those margins. I think what helps us a bit is that we are a sweet treat. We're, we're an affordable treat. And as Suk said earlier on, on the call, uh, people are not likely to, to give up on their birthdays. If people are short of money, then um, <clears throat> they're actually... Uh, less likely to celebrate things out in restaurants and, and, and pubs and things, more likely to celebrate at home where we've got a really good and high quality uh, solution. So we think that there is opportunity to put the prices up, but we'd be putting that up in line with our input costs. Mm. And so, so Shay, just on that one, on, on the prices, etc. How are you seeing that sort of like sort of following through in terms of the different products and the and the new products? How how are you sort of position it? Would you in in terms of making it continue? With, don't lose the quality and the taste, the yeah. luxury side of it, but the, the affordability. Well, I think um, there's a few things that's just inherent in the brand: um, the freshness, the quality. You know, the non-compromised element of, of a cake box cake um, is never going to go away. Um, so. You know, value engineering is out of the question for us. Um, so interestingly, um, David mentioned that celebration is, is a market. And some people go to restaurants and have a cake in a restaurant as well. Um, if you look downwards where people would typically you'd think they'd trade down, um, a supermarket cake. Um, you know, not so long ago, a supermarket cake was seven, eight pounds um, in, a, in a box, ambient, um, very easy. Um, however, if you look at the price of those supermarket cakes now, you're talking 14 or 15 pounds. So what's happened is we've, we've retained this sweet spot in the middle um, where we've got a really good value proposition um, for what is an exceptional product. Um, so we need to hold that, retain that, because the gap either end is, is narrowing. So it's more expensive to buy a, a supermarket cake and it's more expensive or, or less affordable to go to a restaurant. So I see that as, as a sweet spot for us as a, as a brand and as a business. Um, and the innovation we're bringing out, um, I look at it as, as commercial innovation. It's addressing a few key things without adding a lot of complexity to our business and our product. Our product is cake, celebration cake, and, and slices as, 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 a, as a consequence of celebration cakes. Um, and when you add things like flavor, designs, all of those sizes um, to the mix, it's sort of a... a a perfect range really for to meet consumers needs the most important thing for us is freshness you know egg free is really important um it's a question whether that every consumer needs needs to know that because egg free is 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 for us a, a positive uh, we just don't want the consumer to think it could be a negative because it's not compromised the taste of our cake as you know as your daughter knows um, yeah is is absolutely you never know this free from anything um so so yeah, we have the sweet spot in the middle, and I think that is something we have to retain without losing sight of what Kickbox was built on. Because a lot of businesses now will be scrambling to to strip ten pence out of, of of their product or 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 whatever. Um, I think we've spoke at quite a length. We are proud of our cakes, and and we're not stripping anything out of our cakes. 
So, yeah, yeah. No, I would reiterate that. I mean, but the reason why my uh, my daughter uh, is going towards you guys is, is simply because she knows she's going to get a perfect quality, luxury, exactly. delicious exactly. cake for her and, importantly, her guests and family, yeah. rather than actually nipping down a local supermarket and getting a dodgy sponge. Totally. So, uh, yeah, definitely sponge. don't come. Now, now, Sue, just in terms of the sort of like investment, you've got David who's squirreled away just over five million pounds of cash. What are you? What just top level? What, what, any any investments in, in terms of I don't know new distribution centres, new stores, or was it, was it really going to be dividends? Or you know what 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 you're looking to do? We've got the primary. We started this last August to strengthen our management team. I've brought in David. I've brought in Shay, and we've also got a new production manager. We've got a new customer service manager. We've just uh, created. Or uh, we created a food safety team, mm -hmm. and or uh, they are responsible for making sure that we're we all legislation is adhered to, and uh, or we've or strengthened that team for the future because the growth requires a manpower, and by investing in the people in the team now, I can ensure that we've got the building blocks in place to take us further as well, and uh, or it's, it's proving a, a really good. Uh, because we've had our growing pains and now we, we're becoming more professional. And uh, or from an owner occupier or entrepreneurial, we're going to more of a focused PLC or type of company. And that would see us really good in the, in the, in the coming, coming years. Okay. And then just in terms of just, again, bigger picture, I know you've been a very much a UK orientated and focused business, but I mean, my, uh, my my extended family has got sort of a, a French element to it, and they would love a cake box uh, place down the side of the France, okay? And it, it was just, I mean, that was, like, you know, that's just one area. But obviously, you don't want to maybe want to build your own, but sub-franchise, as in, like, you know, the, the name to somebody else who's going to be able to operate it in territory. What's your sort of, like, long-term view overseas? See, if Brexit hadn't come, we would have been in France by now because we could have oh, good. France. okay, right, damn. We, we, <laughs> we could have serviced France from the UK. Or London to Paris only five hours. Or <laughs> London to Scotland is uh, six hours. So we could have done that. But with all the white spaces in the UK, all we've got, you know, our concentration is primarily in the UK. And once we reach, we can reach our goal of 250 in the next couple of years, and then we'll reassess that. And but to, we believe that we can get, you know, locations, we can get, easily get 400 locations in the UK. And once we've done that, then we can start thinking of going overseas. Right. Oh, OK. OK. So, so, so sometime in the future. Now, David, just in terms of a bit nearer to home, the sort of the current trading then in terms of I'm guessing we're in line with sort of estimates. I think it's sure capital. Um, and how, how do you sort of see the, the first half, second half split sort of stuff? Yeah, um, obviously. For part of last year, the, the first the first quarter of, of our results last year, uh, the hospitality sector was shut, so there was less opportunity for people to to celebrate away um, out of the home, which benefited us. I mean, paradoxically, we benefit from from difficult times in in, in that way, but it does mean that we are um, our, our comparatives are like for likes are down obviously on on uh, on the on the previous year during the first quarter and that's likely to continue uh, for the next for, um, for the next couple of months um the uh sure have i think um correctly reflected that in their um in their workings um, so this is this is not going to be such a strong sales growth year uh, would be my my, my, my judgment also of course we're in, we're investing in people but um, I think well certainly the business is is trading at where with our sales and our profitability is higher than it was uh, for the same period last year because we've we've got more stores and also we've got quite a bit of efficiency uh, within that um, group of stores so all this to say that um, uh, we're not um, that the, the 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 cost of living and so on has has certainly um, affected the business, but it hasn't affected the business anywhere near as much as what you read about in the papers from other consumer facing businesses. Because mm. at the end of it, we are a a a, a sweet uh, treat, relatively inexpensive, and something that people do look forward to having. Mm. 
Okay, good. And in terms of news flow, David, we've got we've got um, I'm, I'm presuming we've got a, a half year trading updates, end of September sort of start sort of time. Yeah, the the, the half year trading update will be at, at the end of, of September. Um, we obviously are going out with our full our full report and accounts at the end the yeah. end end of this month. Um, and everything is 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 on track to do that. And also, <clears throat> I hope people have noticed that uh, we did get our, um, uh, our our results for last year out on on time uh, without difficulties. Yeah, well done. Now, just uh, finishing then, Sue. Just um, my wife is desperate for this uh, yellow cake. Uh, so, you know, yellow flow, yeah, you know, lemon cake. Sorry, not yellow cake, lemon cake. She's that'd be great. Um, but just to sort of like, uh, just to conclude, your vision for the sort of the company in five to ten years. How? What do you see it sort of in terms of sort of I don't know size or breadth or or overseas or I mean where would you love the business to get to nobody's going to hold you because it's too but just just a sort of a, a, that, that sort of vision of how you see it developing I believe that we're the number one retailer of uh, our affordable where good value fresh cream celebration cake we have now created a market where you can walk into any store pick up a cake get it personalized and walk out with it or oh, just not long ago, you know, you had to spend three days, you had to pre-order and you didn't know what time you'd get it. But now we're giving you click and click. You can order at the office, collect on your way home, or you can walk in, collect it there and then, or you can order there and then. And I believe that we want to become, we are the number one and we'll, we'll maintain that. And we want to become a national brand where there's a cake box in nearly every city. And so you can walk, and get our delicious products at any time or without notice and get it personalized as well. And we continue to innovate or we are bang on trend of what the consumer wants. And we are there for you when you need us. New Year's Eve now has become our biggest peak in the year. And mm. who would over celebrate a cake for the new year or, or new year with a cake? But that's what they do now because we give them the option of coming in and buying that cake there and then, personalised to how you want it, uh, and we can hope to continue that vein. Great. Well, um, we'll, click, we'll we'll end on that one. The Rolls Royce of uh, of luxury yet affordable um, yeah, fresh cream cake sounds sounds Absolutely. perfect. Thank you very much, Paul. Yeah, thanks, guys, and uh, look forward to chatting uh, going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye now.